everybody, it's your boy Maddie Rants. We need to get into Camp Wanakiki, episode two, the Mile High Club, honey. Y'all know where the links are, upstairs, downstairs, and in between. I wanna get into one of our favorite drag shows on YouTube right now and talk about what happened with the episode, get into the talent show looks, and we got a special guest star on this episode. Yeah. You know, she's one of my favorite, favorite, favorite drag queens ever. But we'll get to that in just a second. Thank you for everyone being very supportive of me doing this show and the love that I've received from it. I really appreciate it, everyone. Now, the twins start off with this stargazing moment at 3 p.m. with Ruthie showing up saying that the campers are ready and we need to get to the next challenge. The campers are actually enjoying lunch in the cafeteria and they're going over last week's challenge as well as their own memories of being at camp or other things to do with physical fitness. And of course, everyone threw their jokes here and there. The humor is placed. Miss Kitty ATX, that eating brownie bit did not miss me one bit, girl. <laughs> as well as Tora Hyman's uh, story of her passing gas while doing a sit-up. If you haven't been there, then God bless your bowels. I've, I've been there before. It has happened, but trade still calls. And season one veteran Vijay J. Snapping Turtle was the cafeteria cook and gave the girls lots of fun and you know what Vijay J. did best on her season. Him baby, that James man still read. <laughs> oh, girl, I had a little giggle while I was watching that. Now the Sugar Baker twins and Ruthie come in to tell them they need to clean up just a little bit before they get to their next challenge. We have a good funny moment with Carly and Paris. Now, the campers walk outside and baby, listen, okay. Sugar Baker twins, team on board. You, I'm looking at some of these obstacle courses and physical challenges like, okay, I, I would do it, but Lord knows I would hope it's a good 70 degrees, possibly under that with a good breeze or something because I've been sweating boots out there doing all that type of stuff. But the girls are given an obstacle course, which is the Mile High Club Badge Challenge. Climb up a pole. Many puns were given towards poles. Shout out to Boris to death. This lesbian joke about climbing poles was everything I needed and then so. But before I just get into everyone's jokes because a lot of the queens had really, really funny moments and of course, good time going up there. I felt for all of them. I really did. Like that is not an easy challenge. They had, this was a physical challenge like no other and it's also about balance and still being campy and still being a funny queen. So I gotta tell you, I'm, I was Paris at one point. I would have walked all the way across and grabbed the pole, cuckoo, and been, been done. Not everyone finished the obstacle course except for Claire and Ivana. So shout out to you both. Everyone else did give a good try as much as they could, but the lily pads, I guess, were the biggest issue for everyone. And for Boris, the pole was the hardest struggle for her. But Boris, I'm glad you even attempted to climb up it and didn't just sit down and say, I'm not gonna do it. So I gotta give each and every one of them, like, all the kudos in the world for this because that is not easy to do as well as being funny and I mean hell Diana fire through her wig it was like child I am mm -mm. it's already a beard here and here on top mm -mm. too much too much I felt that spirit Diana I felt it I would like to say that Carly did have a blast up there and I really felt that energy from her and I was like okay Carly I'm I'm feeling it I'm feeling it I really enjoy her almost mm, kind of like attitude about stuff. It's really cool. Now, Claire ends up winning the challenge and a special guest then arrives that I was not ready for. I'm a little shooketh from. I didn't know I would be this excited for because it is one of my favorite drag queens in the entire universe, Miss Tammy Brown, baby, okay? Teleport us to Mars like that Tammy. Good old All-Stars 1 legendary Tammy. Season 1 legendary Tammy. I don't see you walking children in nature. That Tammy Brown. Shout out to you, Tammy Brown. I had a really great time meeting you at DragCon LA. If you're at New York City DragCon, I'm going to get more merch from you in another picture. I think you're the greatest, so hearts to you. But we need to get to the talent show. Now, the talent show's theme is out of this world, and I'm just going to go in order of each queen as they come out and tell you my thoughts and opinions on their looks and then give you the run through of how this all ended. Up first, Paris LaRue. I got it right this time. Paris, I did not care for this on the initial look. I saw where there were handprints on the skirt down and the whole, you know, the hooped silver thing. It just was a lot going on. But then when I looked at it the second time, I said, oh, the green dress is supposed to be the bean. The silver is supposed to be the UFO. The black up top, I don't understand, but that's okay. The makeup was cute. That was a good $20 wig. Don't tell me it was anything different unless it was cheaper. But then I'm like, oh, you got a good deal. But the panda coming up, I thought was cute. I just... 
I just think it needed a little more oomph and to be a little bit more polished in order for that look to have gone much further, in my opinion. But I thought it was still a great concept and idea that you had for the look. Carly! Baby, okay, no, Carly, here we go. You had me at testicle head. You did. You had me there. It is a show outfit, and it is. I, 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 mm, 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 mm. There is nothing campy about that outfit, but that's not shade. There's nothing campy about it, but that is not shade. Girl, that actually was a look. Nice little one, two, three kick outfit. I was here for it. And I like the accessories with it too, but your makeup is what really sold it along with your, you know, left ball head that she was given. No, no pubic hairs included. I liked it and I thought you sold it and I enjoyed your speech with it too. I liked it, Carly. I was here for the look. Ivana, you did Mars Attacks. If you've never seen the movie, rent it, watch it. I think it's on YouTube, I don't know, but please. It is a classic in my opinion. It's not really, it's sort of a campy classic, but it's like, it's a great movie. And when she started speaking in alien tongue for everything, I was, I just got my full life from that movie. I was just like, oh, I have to go watch this today. So thank you for doing it. I know they said it was costumey, but personally, I lived, I lived, I lived, I lived for the look. Up next, Die in a Fire, okay. Your blending with your beard, sister, is so right with Jesus. I mean, if you're not a Christian, so right with nothing of the universe or whatever you're believing in. It was good. It was that silver, and then you did the whole lip with it, girl. I was like, ooh, I live. Now, some of the other rest of the outfit, I was like, rah, rah, rah. but I was so focused on here, I just didn't care. But I liked it. I just wasn't like, oh, I just thought it was, ooh, and, and the beard, you know, beard sisters, you know, I hear you. I, I, I it was cool, I liked it, it was cool. Coco Jim Holiday, that's another gown, sister, and I see what you do. First of all, your makeup was one. Second of all, you had a shawl that was the planets that you pulled around and made into nunchucks. But that gown was right, and the makeup was right, and everything about it to me was right. It wasn't like, oh my God, give her the grand gold prize, but it was so good. Still in that same sense, I thought to myself, she really is very creative and they need to give her some coots. Please keep bringing it to the stage, mama. I really am here for you, Miss Coco Jim Holiday. Miss Kitty Litter ATX. Okay, the good and the bad, because we I have to be real with you. Sister, sister home, home state, home state. I like the idea, I didn't like the fit. And I'm with the Sugar Baker twins. It needed accessories. It needed accessories. Your whole chest and shoulders was giving me nothing but head and shoulders. Dandruff was not included. You needed an accessory with that. And the, the way the pants fit was giving me jogger tees, girl. I needed to, to be a little tighter on the leg. I know comfortability is important, but I, I just wanted a little more, but I lived and breathed for the concept and I love the colors on you with the wig. I just wanted just a little extra. Barbara Wire, you get a million points for doing Barbarella. I know they said it was costume and they're giving you all of that. The fact you blended your name in with the character that you were also doing for the talent show, all the points were given. I don't care. I liked it. I was like, yes, Barbarella, give me tease. That I love that movie too. So, all right, Barbara Wire. Boom, boom. I liked it. Boris to death. Now, I almost was giving you, I, I almost didn't give you love on this look because I was like, girl, now did she just come out here in a uh, good old Chris Farley run through jacket short tease number until you turned around and showed me the moon? It elevated that look to the limit. It really did. I, it elevated that look. It really did. It helped it out so much. I found that to be so clever, so corny, so campy, so funny. I took everything back I said. Like the whole Chris Farley, I was like, girl, what is this? And then when that turnaround took place, I said, oh yeah. Oh yes, 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 yes. I, I'm here, I'm here for it. So thank you for once again making me a believer. This time you didn't find it 45 minutes later, but if you had that plan, so, so I live. I wanna know where you got the American flag to stick on your butt from it if you had to sit down at any point in time. <laughs> I loved it, I thought it was cute. After that, that turnaround saved him. But other, I thought still, mm, this could have gone to a whole other level, but a lot of people actually did solar system type of things with their looks, so. Uh, but I liked it, Boris, I did. Tora Hyman. Tora Hyman has looks. 
Tor Hyman came with a suitcase. Girl, the hair was cute. I love for the whole little blah, blah, and there she go. I love the dress number on top. I live for the fishnets. I live for the heels. I live for the presentation. That's a jetpack on your back with fire coming out of it. Tora is not to be played with. I loved it. Vivica Galactica. You had me at Lee Bowery Tees, honey. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. And of course, with your name being Vivica Galactica, I assumed you were going to bring it. Shocked you didn't get higher remarks. I wasn't all the way on the judges panel. I thought there should have been a top three. And there also should have been other looks that were given a little bit more goof. I did like this look though. I really did. And I enjoy anybody who gives me face, body, keeny type of tease. And they give you that Lee Bowery-esque feel because I'm a big fan of Lee Bowery stuff. So Shout out to you, girl. I thought it was great. Claire, apparently, you redeemed yourself from last week and that how many chucks could a woodchuck chuck of a woodchuck actually had some psychic abilities. Claire, you gave me space ty you gave me space stylist, all the teas. I live for how the look was done. I live for how everything was presented with the look and how you played up the can't be factor for it. It was great. I loved it. Now, the judges gave the top queens to be Claire and Carly, which I was like, okay, I can see Claire and Carly there too. I just wanted someone extra to be put in for like a top three, bottom three type of teas. But that's just how they went with it. And the bottom three were Barbara, Paris, and Ivana. Two people who I didn't understand why they were there. Paris I got, but I was like, why? Because they gave him too much costume. Claire wins this challenge, which I was excited for. It was really on the full camp level. But I, unfortunately, we lost our good friend, Paris LaRue. Paris, my young, I'm sending you my heart, babe. I feel like you hit me up on Instagram already for like, Matt's gonna hate it. <laughs> but Paris, you did a great job. Honestly, I think you were hilarious. I thought you were super adorable and cute. You will be very successful in your drag career. Don't let this take you down. Don't let this put you down in the rut. I don't wanna hear you like, oh, I was second eliminated. Debbie Fox is doing just fine, honey, and you will do the same, okay? Keep your head up and keep your spirits alive. You are a queen of the people, and we appreciate you for coming on here and giving us the Camp Wanna Kiki tease, honey, okay? All right, that's the end of the episode, girls. Everybody was given their Mile High Club badges. We'll see what episode three brings next week. It's your boy, Maddie Rance. Hugs and kisses, my best love and wishes to you. Don't forget, I'm doing a special live Friday, giving you the rundown of everything that's been going on since I stopped doing lives for a second here, and I'll bring you into what's going on with Maddie. Love y'all. Take care.